High Adventure. Tonight's story by Denver Morgan is entitled, You Can't Pray With One Hand. I don't think our English friend will be giving us any more trouble. Oh. Gregson. Uh, La Lafayette. Hmm? Nice to hear your voice, my friend. Oh. Oh. Uh, you you'll excuse me for not opening my eyes. I after thirty days in solitary. One needs a little time to adjust. It was bad. It was bad. <clears throat> Every third day, Duval came in and beat me up. Oh, oh I hate that man. And this place, hate can be a good thing. It keeps you alive. Hey, help me up. Help me up to my bunk, will you? All right. Hey, stay there. Slowly. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's better. Do, do we have any water? I served this afternoon's ration. Here, drink. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the news since I've been away? What news is there in prison? Men come in, go out, go mad. There's no news. Yeah. Solitary gives one plenty of time to think. We've been here five years now. Five years. On a French prison island in the middle of the Pacific. We've forgotten when. We know nothing. No letters. No newspapers. No radio. What's going on in the outside world? Do you realize it's 1955? We're the living dead. Why torture yourself? We are here for life. Accept it. Criminals must pay their debt. Criminal? Criminal? I was a professional assassin in the pay of my government. My only mistake was to shoot the wrong French official. So what did my masters do? Those experts in compromise? <laughs> they turned me over to the French. And here I am. We have been over it a thousand times. I thought about you, too. I don't think you were a criminal. You merely killed an unfaithful wife. You did the world a service. <laughs> That's what I thought when I did it. How stupid. I had been unfaithful myself many years. Because she stepped out of line once, I became her judge, jury, and executioner five years ago. <laughs> uh, what would she look like today? Like me, middle-aged, going to fat. Nobody would want either of us. I've decided I can't stay here any longer. I intend to escape. Escape? You're crazy. The next island is 300 miles away. And Australia, 200 more. You are gone soft in the head, mon ami. Don't show such contempt for my intelligence. Oh, I like that. Contempt for your intelligence. <laughs> Tell me, Lafayette, how would you escape if you were going to? There is only one way, by sea. And how would you travel? There is only one boat, the governor's launch. 
which is immobilized every night, and there is never more than a quarter tank of fuel. Correct. Uh, well, so you're mad. Stop wasting my time. There's another way. Ah, yes, we could ask permission to build a raft in the evening. Uh, perhaps from, from form a little uh, hobby group with the other prisoners. Maybe Duval would help, yes? There's the doctor's plane. So? We'll steal it. Who's going to fly it? Me. <laughs> what you know of flying? You told me everything. Why didn't you tell me you could fly? One likes to keep something in reserve. For five years. You couldn't keep your mouth shut for five minutes. Don't play with me. I told you I can fly. In the early part of the war, I joined the RAF. Uh, but you told I me... I told you I served in special services. Oh? Huh? This was after I was dropped from air crew. Lack of moral fiber. But I can assure you I learned enough to get a plane off the ground and back onto it. I don't believe you. All right. Let me tell you something about that plane. It's an American trainer called the T-16. It carries two people in ten. The most impressive. Cockpit layout. On the extreme right, there's the fuel pump primer. Then the rev counter. Fuel gauge. Airspeed indicator. Turn and slip. Temperatures. Rate of climb. And in the center, a compass. On the left-hand side of the seat, there's the flap lever. And above your head, the two mag switches. Sometimes a radio is fitted between the two seats. Takeoff speed, 50 miles an hour. Climbing speed, 65. Cruising, 90. Approach speed, 65. Round or 40 miles an hour. Satisfied? <laughs> you surprise me. That was 15 years ago. This plane, which comes once a month, how far can we get in it? If we flew due south on a full tank, we would end up in the sea about a hundred miles from the Australian coast. And then? Then we take to the life raft and hope for the best. Uh, I'll see my life out here. You go. It will be better. I'm finding it difficult to live with a madman as it is. Very well. I'll go alone. But just remember, you get old very quickly in this place. Your gums are getting soft. You know what that is? Lack of protein in your diet. Soon your teeth will fall out. And your hair? Mm. There's not much left as it is. And your waistline? Mm. It increases by the week. Think of me, sipping a cold Australian beer, and remember you could have come with me. Weeding the governor's lawn is not such a bad job. Last night, that was a joke, huh? No. Are you really going to try? Yes. I would like to go with you. Tell me the plan. Quiet, quiet. Here comes Duval. Huh? Getting a little fun, I see. Very observant, Monsieur Duval. Stand up, Chris. Hmm? <coughs> I was told once that the British consider it <coughs> unsporting to <coughs> a man when he's not standing up. <coughs> That is correct, isn't That's it? That's correct, sir. Only amongst gentlemen. I'm as clever with your tongue, aren't you, my English friend? What's your opinion, Lafayette? Of what? Gregson. Idiot. One gets used to him. I think he's a little simple in the head. What they say, uh, son happy. Perhaps you're right. Maybe a little more indoor work could be suitable. Gregson, you're no longer a gardener. You report for new work at a case law immediately after all call tomorrow. Oh, please, Monsieur Duval, I, I apologize. I'm an excellent gardener. The governor said so only the other day. Shut I've decided. As of tomorrow, you're in the machine shop. Good morning, gentlemen. You fool. You should have kept your mouth shut. You had it good here. I was right. The sun has got you. I know what I'm doing. It was necessary to get into the machine shop. Where else do you think I could get a hacksaw? Hacksaw? A hacksaw to cut through the bars in the cell. Well, tell me more. Right. This is my plan. The plane comes with the doctor every third Wednesday. Oui. It arrives around midday, is refueled, and leaves on Saturday, weather permitting. Mm. No guard is placed around it. But how do we get out of our cell? If we're careful, we'll be able to cut through the window bars at night. Use clay from the floor to conceal the marks during the day. Oh, it would take about a month. That's right. Ah, but... No, it would never work. I agree we could get out of the cell, but the aircraft has to taxi directly in front of the watchtower. With a machine gun. 
On top of that, even if we did manage to get airborne, we would, we, we, they would radio military planes in the area to intercept us. I agree. There's nothing we can do about the machine gun, but the radio we can smash before we leave. Oh, but the guards! It can be done if we're careful. You realize we could die in the attempt? I would rather die trying to escape than rot like a vegetable here. There's one other thing. Are we? I intend to kill Duval before we leave. Oh, they, 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 there's enough problems confronting us. And you want to kill Duval as well? You could ruin the whole thing. You forget that Duval lives next door to the radio transmitter. It'll take no time at all. No time at all. <laughs> waiting for us in the irrigation trench. You have the knife? Yes. Now you know exactly what we're going to do. We go straight to the radio hut, making sure we avoid the searchlights and the patrolling guards. We know it takes five minutes for the searchlight to cover the whole compound, and the guards take 30 minutes on their round. Tonight, there should only be two guards on patrol. The others will be in the guard room. And Duval? He does his last check at uh, uh, 11 o'clock and then goes to bed. Right. We smash the radio or do we kill Duval first? Ah, I think it would be better to get Duval first. Very well. When we've smashed the radio, we go down the irrigation trench to the airfield. Then what? I, uh, I untie the guy ropes holding the aircraft down. And then I go around to the front of the machine and swing the prop uh, three or four times. When you shout contact, I swing the probe hard in a clockwise direction. And then, my fat friend, you and I are off to Australia. Let's say it's a package to her, first by air and then by sea. Come on, it's time you're off. Give me a hand with these bars. Still up. We. Oui. Let's go. Who's there? <coughs> yes, it's me. You must be crazy. You'll both never see the light of day for a year after this. For a man about to die, those are strange words, Monsieur Duval. Remember how you used to beat me when I was in solitary? I was acting under orders. The governors, you must understand. I understand. And when I cut your throat, I hope you understand. <coughs> That was very nicely done. Did you ever work in an abattoir? This is no time for compliments. Let's get to that radio. You run the radio, the food, and there's the plan. I told you. It's going beautifully. Come. Wait. Wait. I saw something moving inside that plane. You'll see what it is. The swines. They've locked one of the guard dogs in the aircraft. He will rip us to pieces. It will wake the whole place up. Down. Get down. Searchlight. It's the guillotine for us. I've got Duval's revolver. Crawl under the plane. Reach up and open the door. I'll shoot the dog as it comes out. The noise. Do as I say. Go. Open the door. I'm going in now. And you swing the prop. Right. Come back. Get inside! Go! Go! The searchlight! I can't see a thing!
seeing all over the place. Can't you keep it straight? Shut up. I'm doing all I can. It's been a long time. There, she's off. We've lost that searchlight. We've made it. We've made it. A piece of cake, old boy, as we used to say in the RAF, a piece of cake. Sun's coming up. And the plane's turning gold. For an escaped convict, you are quite poetic. Hey, how much fuel do we have left? And up for about another five minutes. And then? Then we crash land into the sea, get into the raft, and hope the current takes us to the mainland. Maybe we'll be picked up by a passing freighter. You sure we're going in the right direction? Look at the compass. Due south. You realize even if we make Australia, our troubles are not yet over, eh? We'll worry about that when we get there. We've got a hundred miles in an open boat first. It'll give us plenty of time to put a plausible story together. And these Australians, you think they will uh, send us back? My dear fellow, they were descended from convicts. They'll greet us like long-lost brothers. Charming. <laughs> Absolutely charming, huh? The fuel gauge is reading zero. She'll give up any minute now. Make sure your safety belt's fastened and put something in front of your face. I'll come in as slowly as possible. I have complete faith in you. Only a genius could have brought us so far. I'm going to sideslip now. Here we go. 500 feet. 300 feet. Full flap. Ease her back. 100. 50. This is it. You all right? We oui. Get the dinghy. We're sinking. I'll bring the food and water. Got out. Just in time. There she goes. This is the part of the journey I am not so sure about. Just get the sail up and we'll be on our way. How many days has it been? Well, any idea where we are? How far we've come? We lost everything in the storm. Map... Compass everything. At least we have water and a flying fish. <laughs> you know, when I was a boy, I thought flying fish was something in a writer's imagination. It's strange. There have been no aircraft and no ships. I would have thought we'd have seen or heard something. Uh, we have been blown about so much, maybe we are no longer in the shipping lanes. Could be. Our troubles are not over. Yeah, look over there to the east. Huh? Clouds building up again. We're in for another storm. Uh, we won't be able to go on like this much longer. If we die, I'd just like to say this to you, Gregson. I think no matter the wrong you've done, I think you are a good man. Even after Duval? Oh, that pig, he deserved to die. Perhaps he was lucky. His death was quick. Ours is going to be very slow. You have regrets? How about the escape? Hmm. No, it was a chance. You? I regret many things. Did you know that many years ago I was married? And a Scottish girl. Really? Nice people, the Scots. Their men are wild. How were the women? <laughs> wild. We had a son. A son? Marvellous. <laughs> what was his name? Neil. And where is he now? Who knows? She left me when he was about five. I always remember him carrying around his dirty old teddy bear. <laughs> Called it Rufus. <laughs> Rufus, eh? <laughs> I like that name. A nice name. Yes. Neil and Rufus. Mm, things are, are bad enough, my friend. Don't make it other. Let's talk about something else. We are not dead yet. Maybe we'll make it. I'm sorry that was wrong of me. I didn't mean it. You know what I said, keep it to yourself. I keep it to myself. You, you English, you always joke. Keep the stiff upper lip, eh? <laughs> Heck, you're right about the weather. It's, it's going to hit us any minute. We must tie ourselves down. Otherwise, we'll run the risk of being washed overboard. Now, keep one hand free to bail. I'll keep both my hands free if you don't mind. It's difficult praying with one hand. I hear nothing. Nothing. Listen. I can't move. 
What is it? It's land. We have made it, Gregson. We have made it. Come. Let me give you a hand. Uh, we'll get into the shade of those trees. Let me see. Maybe there are people here. Is it really Australia? No. I think it's an island. Oh. I don't know where we are. We'll rest. And then take a look around. There is no one here but the arts. They run away. Everything looks comparatively new. A small pier built out on the reef. Men have lived here no more than two or three weeks ago. Must have been some type of military installation. What is that large radio antenna over there? Hmm? Some sort of navigational aid, I guess. Let's take a look. That mast must go up into the air about a hundred feet. Yeah, come over here. What do you make of this? Huh? A concrete slab. Must be 30 foot by 30 foot. And in the middle is a trap door. This gets crazier all the time. Now, come on, help me with this door. There must be a reason for all this. <laughs> Have you ever seen a door like this, sir? Uh, it's solid steel. Hey, there are metal stairs going down. Come on. Oh, I'm not going down there. You're afraid after what we've been through? I'll tell you something. I'm no longer afraid of anything. Are you coming? Oh, I'm coming. It's a type of laboratory. Look at the instruments. All over the place. Is everything working? Yes. Look at these dials. They're registering. Must be a type of experimental station, eh? But why nobody here to manage it? Maybe they're coming back. Over there. Over there. Look. A radio. Maybe we can get it to work. There, I almost had something. Keep trying. This is the final warning for all aircraft and shipping within 100 miles radius of Paradise Atoll. At 1300 hours Greenwich Mean Time today, an atomic device will be exploded in the atmosphere directly above the island. The area already described is expected to be heavily contaminated by radioactive dust for a period of some ten days. We repeat, this is the final warning to all aircraft and shipping within 100 mile radius of Paradise Atoll. Latitude and longitude are as follows. Are you thinking what I am thinking? Afraid so, old man. I'm afraid so. Paradise at all? Yes. Can we survive? I don't know. What are you doing? This place is a home underground. Maybe there's food here. I think better on a full stomach. Look here. Oh. A fridge full of food and there must be two dozen beers. Quite incredible. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Close the trap door, open the beer, and draw up a chair. What time is it? Coming up to 12.59. Pass me a beer, old sport. Ah, uh, oui. Did I ever tell you that one about the girl and the big... Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.